Hi, this is Kurt. This is to present the MEP802 and MEP803A Wi-Fi and two-wire remote start and parameter monitoring kit. During the video, I'm going to do an overview of the major features of the remote start kit. Uh, the, we'll review the remote start kit components, what's contained in the kit, uh, an overview of the installation of the kit, and then a series of demonstrations using uh, remote start features, the two-wire remote start, and the Wi-Fi remote start system, as well as monitoring of all the parameters, and then some of the customization that can be done to the remote start controller. After the remote start kit has been installed, the generator's front panel controls still function as they did before. The generator can be started and stopped, contactor open and closed, etc. And all of the gauge functions are unaffected once the kit has been installed. The major feature that this kit has that no other remote start kit can provide is the ability of using a Wi-Fi enabled device, such as a cell phone, a laptop or a tablet or any device that has a web browser to communicate to the generator, control it, and display all of the real-time parameters uh, on the generator just as if you had access to all of the gauges on the generator. In addition, it does also support a two-wire interface uh, like classical remote start generators. The two-wire interface can be hooked up to items such as an automatic transfer switch to command the generator to automatically start and stop under the transfer switch's control. You can also hook it up to a solar charge controller uh, so that your batteries can be recharged automatically should their battery voltage drop below a predetermined level. You can also hook it up using a simple toggle switch if desired as a very easy method of starting and stopping the generator. The toggle switch method may be very useful if you have the generator outside a garage or a workshop and you wish to be able to start and stop the generator from inside the shop or garage by simply toggling a toggle switch. Also, the toggle switch method is good for family members since they don't need to know all the steps of how to start the generator, including preheating, priming, starting warming up and then closing the contactor and then the whole routine for shutting the generator down when it's no longer needed. That's a summary of the major features of the remote start kit. Next up, we'll go through the various components that are in the kit when purchased. The first item in the kit, or the major part, is the circuit card assembly itself. This gets installed inside the control cube, as it's known on the right hand wall as you're looking into the control cube. The second item with the kit is a pre-assembled tested wire harness uh, that simply plugs into the control circuit card assembly and then all of the wires on the end of the cable are labeled clearly as to where they get attached to. Also in the kit is a user's manual which goes through the step-by-step -step installation procedure and then also how to use the remote start kit and all of its features. Included is a hardware kit, which has warning labels, uh, the Wi-Fi antenna, stainless steel mounting hardware, zip ties, and a single wire lug that needs to be installed in the current harness within the MEP generator. This is a brief overview of the installation steps to install the remote start kit in your generator. The first step is to affix the template provided to mark the five holes that must be drilled in the sheet metal. Four holes are used for mounting the circuit card assembly controller inside the control cube, and the fifth hole is for mounting of the Wi-Fi antenna. Once those five holes are drilled through the sidewall, the controller card is then mounted to the inside of the control cube as shown. Using the supplied stainless steel hardware, after the card is mounted, the antenna connector is then mounted in the sheet metal directly above the circuit card assembly and the antenna connected to the connector. Once complete, the wire harness leads are then connected to various points within the control cube. Uh, for example, one of the wires gets connected to the ground stud on the bulkhead, as shown in this picture. Next up, there are a series of connections to various switches on the control panel. 
And in this case, we're showing the connection to the switch S5 terminal three. Um, and the wires are all labeled. And in this case, it corresponds to the generator wire 147A. Besides connecting to switches, there are several connections made to various meters on the front panel. And in this case, it's showing connections to the fuel gauge, temperature gauge, and the oil pressure gauge. Another class of connections are to a module. In this case, it's the overload relay to terminals K8-2 and K8 pin 4. And one of the last steps is to affix a couple of warning labels to the front of the generator, warning people that there is an automatic start capability in the generator and how to safely disable it. Next up will be a series of videos demonstrating the controller. This is a demonstration of the two-wire remote start and stop feature that's built into the remote start controller for the MEP802-803 generators. I have a switch connected on the end of that white wire to simulate the contact closure of an automatic transfer switch or charge controller to request the generator to first start up and then for the generator to shut down. I will close the switch and the generator will go through its automatic startup routine. You can hear the pump priming in the generator. The generator starts and then warms up for a predetermined period of time before closing the contactor. You may be able to see the contactor light is on so there is power to the lugs. The remote transfer switch can then, if desired, uh, request the generator to shut down. One additional feature that this remote controller has is that on a Wi-Fi device, you can monitor all of the operating parameters while it's running under two-wire control. I'll go into more detail and should give you a better demonstration later in another video. Once the automatic transfer switch is satisfied and it no longer requires power, it can request the generator to shut down, which I will simulate. The generator will open the contactor, let the engine cool and the gen head cool, and then shut the engine down. Once the remote start controller is installed, it's time to set up a Wi-Fi device, such as a cell phone, to have communications with the remote start controller. In this case, I'm going to be doing it with the Android phone that I'm recording this video on. So first step is to go into the tools and settings screen, into the connections, and drill down to the Wi-Fi connection screen. You'll see that I'm currently connected to my home router, Becca 2.4G. Next step is to enable power to the remote start controller. I just pulled out the emergency stop switch to provide power to the controller. It is booting up. Once it boots, it broadcasts its SSID or its name, which is Remote Start 05 for this controller. To connect to it, simply select that device, enter the supplied password for the Remote Start controller, hit connect. that the internet is not available. That is because this is a direct Wi-Fi connection between the cell phone and the remote start controller. There is no router involved whatsoever. So you know, that's not a requirement for this system to operate. Uh, once connected, simply go back to your home screen, fire up a web browser such as Chrome, and then in the address bar, type in the URL of the remote start controller, which is 192.168.4.1. You may want to set that as a favorite in your browser. And you can see the web page is pulled up, the home screen for the 802.803 controller, uh, showing the start button for the engine control, battery voltage, air temperature, which are always displayed on the screen. 
Below that, there are a number of statistics that are displayed, and I'll go into those in greater depth later. Uh, there's a utility to erase those statistics up above selectively if you wish. Might want to do that during a maintenance cycle on your generator. And the last option is settings where you can customize all of the delays and durations of all of the startup and shutdown steps. As demonstrated earlier, the generator can be started remotely over Wi-Fi using your Wi-Fi device such as a phone or a laptop or a tablet. Uh, in this case, I'll start it using the phone that I'm recording this video with. You can see it's connected with the um, controller uptime and live updates on the battery voltage and air temperature. I will start the start sequence and you'll hear the generator out in my driveway prime and then start and then close the contactor. You can see it indicates the fuel system's priming during the prime period. The engine starter was engaged and the field is flashing in the generator. And now that that is finished, it's, there's a slight pause between it starting and then the contactor being closed. And at this point, the generator is running and the contactor is automatically closed. Down below, you'll see a set of statistics. Um, the AC voltage, frequency, percent load, fuel level, coolant temperature, oil pressure, battery voltage, and air temperature are all updated every two seconds. Next down is a transfer control. Once the generator is started either manually through the front panel or over Wi-Fi, control can be transferred back and forth between the cell phone and the front panel controls. You may have a situation where you wish to manually start the generator and then once running, uh, transfer control to the cell phone so you can go into your shop or your house and then shut the generator down or monitor its performance and then shut it down and vice versa. Uh, you may have a case where you start it with the cell phone but you want to transfer control man back to the manual controls on the front panel. If the generator is running and under Wi-Fi control, uh, as it is uh, shown on the screen, uh, the generator can be requested to stop uh, using the cell phone or the, on the web browser. Uh, simply hit the stop button. If, for instance, you hit that by accident, you've got a few seconds to hit the abort shutdown to stop the shutdown process. Uh, that's there just in case you hit stop by accident. If you really intend to do a shutdown, simply hit the stop button. It will count down, and then after the countdown, it will open the contactor. After it opens the contactor, it goes through a cool down cycle. It's set very short for this video. Once it's completed that, it will shut the generator down. And as you can hear, it stopped, and it's back to the home screen. While the generator is running under Wi-Fi control, you have the ability to remotely turn on the box fuel pump. Uh, there's a control button up top, so if you have a fuel supply uh, plumbed into the generator for automatic refill of the day tank, the pump cycle can be enabled by hitting the box fuel enable control and that will allow the generator itself to automatically and top off its day tank uh, automatically. If you wish to disable that function, simply hit disable and that will turn off the aux fuel control. Below that is an open contactor or contactor control button. Uh, currently the contactor is closed. If we wanted to open the contactor for some reason remotely, simply hit the open contactor button and it will open the contactor at the generator. I'll close the contactor back up and you'll see the status is updated to contactor closed. The next green button down is the transfer control that I mentioned. This allows transfer of control between the generator and the cell phone. Right now it's under cell phone control. 
if I wanted to pass control to the generator, as indicated on the screen, you first must set the S1 switch on the generator front panel to the prime run, which I will do now. Just turned S1 to the prime run, so now I can transfer control to the front panel on the generator. And you'll see the screen is updated to indicate that it's running under manual control. And you'll see the start stop button has been taken off the screen. If I wanted to transfer control back to the cell phone, simply hit transfer control on the cell phone. And once done, turn the S1 switch on the generator back to the off position, which I just did. So now the cell phone has the ability, ability to start, excuse me, start and stop the generator remotely. This is an explanation of the statistics that are displayed on the screen, both when the generator is running and not running. Uh, the first is the total running hours. Anytime the generator is running, regardless of how it started, this total running hour meter will increase. Uh, down below that is the total number of start-stop cycles each time the generator is started and stopped. Uh, this counter will be incremented, again, regardless of how the generator was started. Below that is a historical statistics table. Um, every 10 seconds while the generator is running, it goes out and measures all of the parameters below and updates this table with the minimum, average, and maximum values that have been recorded. Um, those being air temperature, battery voltage, percent load, AC voltage, frequency, coolant temperature, the fuel level, and then the oil pressure. As I previously mentioned, all of the settings for the durations and delays of the startup cycle and the shutdown cycle for both Wi-Fi start-stop and two-wire start-stop are all settable. Uh, you may want to adjust these based on your particular application of the generator. If you wish to go in and review or change this, those settings, simply tap the settings button. It will show you what the factory default delays and durations are for each of the parameters during the startup and shutdown for the two methods. If you wish to proceed, and do some adjustments you can hit the next button here you can see the preheat is set for 20 seconds if i had felt that that wasn't enough say i'm in a particularly cold area i can increase the preheat duration up to a maximum of 30 seconds so i hit increase you'll see it counting up and changing that duration and i can wait till it gets to 30 once it hits 30 hit stop increase the maximum value for this one parameter is limited. Going beyond 30 seconds can damage the preheaters, so the software is set up to prevent you from accidentally setting it to a duration that is too long that might damage the heaters. Once you're satisfied with this, you can hit next. This is the duration of the prime, so the amount of time the primary fuel pump runs before the starter is engaged. If you wanted to change this, from four seconds to six seconds. You could hit the increase button, let it increase to six, hit stop increase, and it's now set to six seconds. If for some reason it advances too far or you change your mind, oh, you might say, hey, I really wanted that at four seconds. Just simply hit the decrease button and it'll decrease and then hit stop, decrease. Below that are fast increase and decrease buttons. Uh, for some durations um, that you want to set extremely long or make a large change to, these are helpful to quickly increase the duration or the delay. Wi-Fi cranking. This is the amount of time the starter is engaged to allow both the gen set to start, oil pressure to build, and for the field to flash before it's released. Currently this is set at 4 seconds and can be changed. 
warm-up time. This is the amount of time from once the engine has started to the time that the contactor has closed. For your application, you may want to give it some amount of time to warm up before putting a load on the generator. And this can be set, again, to a very wide range depending on your application. Wi-Fi stop command to contactor open. This is the time delay for you to abort the shutdown process should you have hit the stop command by accident. Cool down duration. This is the amount of time once the contactor is open that the generator will continue to run to allow the generator head to cool down. Uh, it's recommended to be five minutes. Um, in this case, it's only set to six seconds for the purpose of this video. And again, for the two wire starts, you can set the cranking duration for your application. The amount of time the engine is allowed to warm up before the contactor is closed. The amount of time from when the stop command is issued by, say, your automatic transfer switch before the contactor is opened. And then the duration of time from when once the contactor is opened until the engine shuts down. Again, this is to allow the generator head to cool down. Once you're done, it displays what the new settings for all of the delays are. If you're happy with those, select Done, and those are saved into memory in the controller. Once your controller is set up and working, you have the option to go in and calibrate the various readouts that are shown on the live display. And that's simply done by using the Calibrate button on the screen. The Calibrate button is hit, it takes you to an overview of the calibration procedure and walks you through parameter by parameter to adjust each of the readings. To proceed, simply hit next. Uh, this shows what the battery voltage is. If you measure the voltage of the battery and it doesn't match what's being shown on the screen, you can adjust it by using the increase or decrease function. Uh, for instance, if you were getting a reading of 28 volts on a separate calibrated meter, but this was only showing 27.7 volts, to correct that to 28, simply hit the increase button, and every couple of seconds it will update its calibration value, and you'll see the readout increase. Once it matches what you'd like, simply hit the stop increase button, and that parameter has now been calibrated and never needs to be set again unless you wish to readjust it. All the other values can be adjusted, such as the air temperature, the voltage readout if you're running the AMVM switch in a 240 volt position. Or if you have the AMVM in a 120 position, you can adjust this readout. I haven't changed the AMVM switch, that's why it shows 240. Uh, frequency can be adjusted so it matches the true frequency output of the set, should this not be exact. Fuel level can be adjusted so it matches the reading on the fuel level gauge, if, you, if that is more accurate. Same for oil pressure coolant temperature, uh, the percent load, and once done, it shows you a list of values up at the top. Uh, those are really just for information. Those are the actual parameters that are used in the software for calibration. Once you're satisfied with the calibration, you can hit done. If for some reason you think you goofed something up, you can use the next function and go in and reset the calibration values back to how the controller was calibrated when it was shipped to you. This next section is in regard to erasing the statistics log. You can individually erase the running hours, the total start stops, or the historical statistics table using the erase function. For this demo, I'm going to reset the total running hours because I may have used that to determine when an oil change was required. So to erase the total running hours, simply enable the erase of total running hours, and then hit Confirm Erasure. 
once done, we go back to the home screen and you see the total running hours has been set to zero. This is just a quick overview of having installed a kit in a MEP 802A. Um, the only external thing that you will see is the Wi-Fi antenna that is mounted to the side of the control cube. On the front panel, there are a couple of warning stickers that need to get applied uh, just to warn users that this set could be automatically started remotely without the use of this switch and then also how to disable any remote starting. All, virtually all of the installation work occurs in the control cube. As you can see over here, the remote start controller is bolted to the bulkhead. Uh, the supplied wire harness has been installed to the various points. For instance, on the fuel gauge, oil pressure, and temperature sensor gauges, the various wires are connected to the terminals, and each of these connections are pointed out in the uh, installation manual. Different sets have different gauges and switches as they change them occasionally depending on who supplied the switches. So you need to be careful that each wire is connected. Each wire does have a wire label on it indicating what it's getting hooked to. And then the respective wire number in the generator's wire harness. So in this case for the fuel gauge, it's supposed to go to M5, the S terminal on the gauge. And also as a hint or a help, uh, it says that it does need to go to wire 128 Baker. If you're going to use the two wire remote start feature of the remote start controller, you'll need to install this connector in the pan of the control cube so that the two wires required for the remote start can be routed out of the generator and then back to your transfer switch or charge controller, uh, whatever device is going to be requesting the generator to automatically start and stop over the two wire interface. Something I'd always recommend that you check for is that your generator has the fuse mod installed. This one does, as you can tell by the fuse holder to the left of the voltage regulator. And I also suggest it to install the what's known as the MOV mod, which is a metal oxide varistor or surge protector, and that helps protect the voltage regulator from being damaged.